Oh, hi. Are you ready to witness some suffering? Because we got a good one this week. But first of all, who remembers this? Yep, possibly my favourite running memory ever where Mary started to talk a completely new made up language because she was under duress. Absolutely wonderful. But do you remember this? That's right, just a few weeks later, Mary went from running a 21 something minute 5k to a sub 20 minute 5k. And really, it was mostly down to a little bit of planning and a lot about mindset. So guess what? I've asked her to do it again today in the heat of Thailand. Let's see where we're at for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> and while I'm waiting for Mary, because she's still got work to do, so she's coming down in about an hour, I'm gonna go through my own private suffering session by running one hour at the top of zone two and see how far it takes me. Oh, did I mention also, it's on laps of a track, which can be hell in itself. So this video really, as much as it is a bit of fun watching Mary beast herself to do a 5K, it's about mindset and how important it is in running because it is crucial, especially with the races that we've got coming up. But let me elaborate. I have a theory about suffering and it starts with the realization that all runners and triathletes are a bit crazy and you have to be here's what i mean our natural default for the brain and body is to stay safe and in these times where for most of us food and shelter is abundant there's not much to make us feel genuinely unsafe in survival terms so suffering is not what the brain wants but here we are actively seeking it out not just seeking it out but overall enjoying it because you know what happens to those that don't like it they don't run anymore suffering over 5k is a different suffering to 10k and that's a different suffering to half marathon which is a different suffering to marathons and that's a different suffering to ultra marathon <laughs> but it's still suffering and it's necessary for growth so we have to be proud that we're a bit nuts that we love the pain as my friend mike once said training and racing is hard but we do hard things. So asking Mary to do a hard 5K was not about getting a PB, it was about reminding her to suffer and to grow, to push herself into pain and to hold, to be able to cope with what's ahead, because it's gonna be needed. Oh. And I'm just the mere hors d'oeuvre in this. I've just done 14 kilometers, one hour, happy days, I'm soaked, really. The story's about this person. Here she is, star of the show. How are you feeling? Scared. Like, I don't know why I get so nervous about these situations. Well, I've just been talking about suffering and how us runners have a screw loose because we actually like suffering because the people that don't like suffering don't stay in running. So there is a point to you that likes it in there. The yeah, scared is good. I know, like the thought of it now, how much it's gonna hurt is delicious no not right now so we've just talked we actually just looked back at our last video when mary ran the 5k pb and we worked out what you need to run per lap because we like to plan and i did make a good point in the last video which was i found it really useful to break it down per lap rather than kilometer because obviously you've got gps while you're out on the track and it's not necessarily always accurate but laps are super accurate it is it's a running track, we know what we're looking at. So it's good to have lap plan. And that lap plan is 96 seconds per lap, 48 seconds for your first lap, half lap. Yeah, that would get me, I might not be able to run that fast. So it's important to remember that none of this is a fail. If you don't run four minute kilometers a day, it doesn't matter. This, this run Okay, is, that's is, as long as I think that because that's where I struggle because you always wanna- Be better than you were. Be as good as you were. We're in Thailand. Let me ask you this one question. Did I run a 5K PB when I did it? No. Thank you. Was I bothered? No. Thank you. Okay, does that make you feel better? Yeah, I think it's because 20 minutes is such a barrier, so you're like one side of it or the but other. But you've already run it. Yeah. Some days you're not gonna run it and some days you are. You've already run sub 20, that's yeah. in the bag. Yeah, so if I can just get do my best. Yeah, let's just make this happen. It's gonna be fun. Type two, fun. Right, you tell me when you're gonna start and I'll start. Okay, you just count me down, do a three, two, one. All right? Okay. Three, two, 
So here's the thing. There is no way I'm going to get Mary to talk, or in fact, there is no way Mary should be able to talk during a hard 5K. I don't think anyone should be able to talk during a hard 5K. So I've asked Mary to talk about using her recollections of the day rather than doing it right there and then to talk about what she was feeling and when during the effort. So despite being really nervous before I began, I felt quite calm and focused as soon as I started in kilometre one. The pace felt good, I felt pretty strong and smooth, so it was a good start. I felt like I could hold that pace. So kilometre two was where I started to feel like it was gonna be a bit of a battle. Not massively painful, but I just knew that I was gonna have to ease off the pace, otherwise I was gonna experience some kind of major crash and burn later. So I dialed it back a little bit, but managed to keep the fluidity and consistency. I was starting to feel it on the body, but I still felt pretty good. And at this point, I knew that I had to switch my aim to just maintaining a consistent pace and trying to stay strong and not become negative or totally fall apart. Kilometre three again, I knew I had to back off the pace a little bit. I could feel my heart rate rising. I could feel the blood pumping. I really started to feel the heat of the day as well. I was hot, I was sweaty, I was feeling tired. And I knew that at this point I needed to dial it back a little bit further. But I was still determined to stay positive mentally because I knew that if I could do that, that would be a huge win regardless of the time. Kilometre four is what we call the grip pit. So you're in the depths, you're not quite near to the end yet and it's really, really starting to bite. I felt very, very hot, starting to feel tired in my legs and each lap started to feel like it was a little bit further. But I just focused on, again, one lap after the other and in my head I was saying to myself, be positive, think positive. And actually, I didn't have to dial it back any further at this point. I knew I could hold it. And I held 4.11 for the fourth kilometre, which was really good. I was holding it, I was being consistent, and that was a win at this point. It was hurting and I could have let it all fall apart, but I really focused on keeping it together. At this point, I was just dreaming of the finish line, so I was counting down the half laps and the laps as they were ticking along. I felt quite angry at the situation. You just feel like you are bursting to stop and your body's bursting, everything, you know, your heart rates. I could feel it was really high and I'm trying to keep a lid on it, but it's boiling and bubbling up away underneath. So just one foot after the other, keeping focused, looking ahead and actually I think my last lap was probably my fastest of the whole 5k and that was a huge win so I did manage to finish strong I'd left enough in the tank to give it some on my last lap so although it was painful and I had to be gritty it was a great finish and a big success how did you do Woo! Um. Really well, actually. Do you know what? I felt so positive about that. It was hard. I mean, I was in a dark, very, very, very dark place. And I knew probably after a kilometre that there was no point kind of looking at my watch. I just thought, I feel like I'm in a good rhythm, so I'm just going to keep going at this pace. And I just felt really positive. I felt like all I can do is control it and do my best. Um, so even though all my worry beforehand about trying to hit a certain time, as soon as I started running, I knew I could only do what I could do. What did you do? I did, well, my watch that I stopped at the finish line was 20.49, but I, it says I ran an extra 60 meters, but I, obviously the track knows. Yeah, the track knows. So 20.49. Yeah, average pace was 4.07, so. You gotta be happy with that. I'm really happy. It's probably like, yeah. It's up there and uh, 
yeah, it was really <laughs> horrifically hard, but I'm really proud of it, how I did and how I kept my mind. I just kept telling myself, be positive, be positive, and I did it. No, well done. Thanks. Oh, hi. Hi. This isn't where we left off. It's been a few days actually. It's been a few days since the 5K. We are, um, I want to give Mary enough time to properly reflect and we're now standing in the water in Kochang. Look, even a dog who's, are our back legs in the air? I think they are. Anyway, we're on Kochang. So, oh, other side, I get told. Mary, <laughs> how did your 5K go? Good, I'm feeling a lot more relaxed right now than I was during it, that's for sure. You've reflected, haven't you? I mean, you've, you've explained how it felt in the race, you've explained how it felt in the aftermath, just straight after. Mm. I just said aftermath, that's American, I'm aftermath. Northern. Oh, no way. Anyway, how are you feeling now when you look back on it? Um, yeah, do you know what? I feel really proud actually because looking back at my splits, it was a really controlled run, mm -hmm. which is something that I used to really struggle to do is to maintain a pace. And I that's not something that we've looked at, is it actually? Or we talked about here, yeah. Yeah. So talk us through quickly your splits, like why you're proud of them. What was so the plan? So my actual plan was to go out for kind of like 20 minutes or just below. So four minute kilometers was what I was trying to hit. First kilometre was four minutes exactly, then it was 4.05, 4.11, 4.11, 4 And the plan was, if I couldn't hold the four, just to dial it back and then try and hold what, what I is could, manageable. Which I did. You did. You went and 4, 4.05, so you dialed it back a bit. Obviously not dialed it back enough, so you yeah. went to 4.11 and held. Yeah, and then... Um, the fastest kilometre was the last one. Not fastest uh, sorry, altogether. the fastest of the last three though. But I think my fastest lap was the last lap, so I was able to finish strong, which is good. So I'm it's learning really like race tactics. Yeah, well done. Uh, well, well done, done. <laughs> well done. I, I forgot to actually say that this is not car chat because we're not in a car, but we are on Ko Chang. So it's either Ko Chat or Chang Chat. I like Chang Chat. New segment. Yeah, so this is this is where we're at right now on Co-Chan. I think you'll uh, you'll agree that the next couple of videos might be pretty decent. Um, so we hope that you enjoy them. And uh, if if you're new to the channel, then we do this all of the time. Like this is what we do. We live on islands. All right, we do live in Thailand, but uh, we're aiming to come to Ireland as much as possible. Lots of races in the pipeline. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you really enjoyed it. Well done to you, because it is not easy running in Thailand in the heat. It is grim. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer. And um, luckily we didn't capture the moment where... You swore I'm... at me. <laughs> oh, I did get it on camera, actually. Shall I put it at the end? No. Just bleep it out? I don't know. <laughs> Mary swore at me during the 5k, but other than that, it was brilliant. No, I just got a little bit stressed when I was in the deep dark pit at 4.5 kilometers and you had a camera in my face. Good thing this video is all about suffering, isn't it? And how it's necessary. <laughs> see you on Wednesday, see you on Sunday. Loads of races coming up, loads of training, loads of content. I'm really excited for where the channel is going. In Thailand. You wanna say goodbye bye? Bye. You want to say goodbye, Winnie? She's just standing in the water. That's what she's been doing all day. Literally just standing there. Thinking, what is my life? Yeah, is this my life now? See you on Wednesday.